Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanatana Sahakaya Chaksu Unmilitamena Tasmai Shri Guruvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Stabditam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Svam Padanti Kam Bande Ham Shiguro Shiyuta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Draganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Sya He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chagatpate Gopesha, Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta, Namostate, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swade, Vrishavanu Suti De, Anamami Hari Priye, Vancha Kalpa, Tarubhishya, Sindhu Ebacha, Paditanam Pavane Vyo, Vaishnave Vyo, Namaho Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasari Gaur, Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Namo Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya, Bhutale, Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, Namaste, Zarazvari Devi Gauravari Pacharine, Nirvase Sasunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine. So, reading from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10, verse number 9, the opulence of the Absolute. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, Machita Makata Prana, Bodhyanta Parasparam, Katiantas Chimam Nityam. Tushyanti cha ramanti cha. Chant. Machita makata prana. Machita makata prana. Machita Makata Prana, Machita Makata Prana, Budayanta Prasparam, Budayanta Prasparam, Katayanta Shamam Nityam, Katayanta Shamam Nityam, Tushyanti Charamanti Tushyanti Charamanti Anyone else? Machita Makata Prana, Bhagavantas Prasparam, Bhagavantas Chamam Nityam, Bhagavantas Chamam Nityam, Tushyanti Charamantita, Machita. Their minds fully engaged in me. Matkata Prana. Their lives devoted to me. Bodhyanta. Preaching, Preaching. Parasparam. Parasparam among themselves, among themselves. Katiyanta. Katiyanta talking, talking. Cha. Cha also, also. Mum. Mum about me, about me. Nityam. Nityam perpetually, perpetually. Tushyanti become pleased, pleased. Cha. Cha also, also. Ramanti. Enjoy transcendental bliss. Cha, also. 
So this is the second in a series of four verses which are called the essential verses of the Gita by which the entire philosophical teachings of the Bhagavad Gita are coming from these four verses. This is the second one. The thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from enlightening one another and conversing about me. Krishna is speaking here. Please repeat the thoughts of my pure, do pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are fully devoted to my service. And they derive great satisfaction and bliss from enlightening one another and conversing about me. In Srila Prabhupada's purport, pure devotees whose characteristics are mentioned here engage themselves fully in transcendental loving service of the Lord. Their, nine, their minds cannot be diverted from the lotus feet of Krishna. Their talks are solely on the transcendental subjects. The symptoms of pure devotees are described in this verse Specifically, devotees of the Supreme are 24 hours daily engaged in glorifying the qualities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Their hearts and souls are constantly submerged in Krishna, and they take pleasure in discussing him with other devotees. In the preliminary stage of devotional service, they relish the transcendental pleasure from the service itself. Now here's an important point. And in the mature stage, they are actually situated in love of God. So I'll repeat that. In, in the preliminary stage of devotional service, they relish the transcendental pleasure from the service itself. And in the mature state, they are actually situated in love of God. Once situated in that transcendental position, they can relish the highest perfection which is exhibited by the Lord in his abode. Lord Chaitanya likens transcendental loving service, devotional service, to the sowing of a seed in the heart of the living entity. There are in innumerable living entities traveling throughout the different planets of the universe, and out of them there are a few who are fortunate enough to meet a pure devotee and get a chance to understand devotional service. This devotional service is like a seed, and if it's in, sown in the heart of the living entity, it goes on hearing and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That seed fructifies just as a seed of a tree fructifies with regular watering. The spiritual plant of devotional service gradually grows and grows until it penetrates the coverings of the material universes and enters into the Brahma Jodi of fulgence in the spiritual sky. In the spiritual sky also, that plant grows more and more until it reaches the highest planet, which is called Goloka Vrindavan, the supreme planet of Krishna. Ultimately, the plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna and rests there. Gradually, as a plant grows, fruits and flowers that plant of devotional service also produces fruit and the watering process in the form of chanting and hearing goes on. This plant of devotional service is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila chapter 19. It is explained there that when the complete plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, one becomes fully absorbed in love of God then he cannot live even for a moment without being in contact with the Supreme Lord, just as the fish cannot live without water. In such a state, the devotee actually attains to transcendental qualities in contact with the Supreme Lord. The Srimad Bhagavatam is also full of such narrations about the relationship between the Supreme Lord and his devotees. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is very dear to the devotees that stated in the Bhagavatam itself, Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam Amalam Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam. In this narration, there is nothing about material activities, economic development, sense gratification, or even liberation. 
Srimad Bhagavatam is the only narration in which the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord and His devotee is fully described. Thus, the self-realized souls in Krishna consciousness take continual pleasure in hearing such transcendental literature, just as a young boy and girl take pleasure in association. Hmm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So here, this is where you, if you're looking for happiness in devotional service, this is where it's being explained, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Krishna is the manifestation of supreme excellence in all qualities. He is all beauty, he is all strength, he is all knowledge, he is all fame, he is all wealth, and ultimately he is also all renunciation. In the material world, everyone is trying to achieve one or more of these opulences to make their material life successful. People try for these things, fame, wealth, try to become more beautiful, stronger, uh, you know, and even those who practice some kind of spirituality find happiness in renunciation. But Krishna has all of these six qualities completely in full. And he performs his activities centered around these six qualities. His beauty, his famous... He, what, what's, what's famous about Krishna? The Bhagavad Gita. He spoke it 5,000 years ago, it's still famous today. That's his fame. He is known as, you know, beauty. he's beautiful. We see that in the deity form, the beauty of the deity. And so, uh, and, you know, his strength, he showed that by lifting over down hill with a little pinky of his left hand. So we have so many of the activities of Krishna that sent around these six qualities or characteristics. So in order for us to find satisfaction, we have to go find that in the activities of devotional service because then you find happiness, you find wealth, you find strength, you find beauty, knowledge, everything is there in Krishna. So when we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we're also hearing about his characteristics and qualities which are attractive because everyone is attracted to these six things. And therefore Krishna has them in full and he displays them in his pastimes. So we learn so much and we gain so much along with the happiness that comes by contacting Krishna in his activities when we hear and chant the glory. That's why it says this verse is uh, one of the most important verses because it says great personalities find happiness in speaking about Krishna and reminding others about Krishna like that. So in, that, in these activities of Krishna, everything is there that we're looking for. If you can do your flower service without distracting the class, that would be really good. You know, because you're doing one thing and the class is going on, so you're not even paying attention to the class. So I know you have to do this service here, but do it, do it in such a way as you don't cause distractions, okay? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, yeah, if we want to really know more about Krishna and all the happiness that comes from knowing about Krishna, this is the process. It gets right to the essence. That's why this verse is, is a very important verse. That devotees find everything they need in Krishna. They don't look for it anywhere else. Everything is found in Krishna. And how do we contact Krishna? By hearing about him, chanting about him, remembering him, telling others about him, serving him, doing all our activities in connection with Krishna. And then, what do we have? Krishna consciousness. 
and all of the happiness that comes with Krishna conscious, which is automatic. <laughs> so this verse gets right to the point here. And Prabhupada points to Srimad Bhagavatam as the way to find all that that we were speaking about. It's all in Bhagavatam. The name, fame, form, qualities, pastimes, paraphernalia, abode, Everything is in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But if we don't read Bhagavatam, or don't hear Bhagavatam regularly, we won't know anything about Krishna. <laughs> it's all in there. Krishna makes his knowledge about himself through his pure devotees who write about him through the realizations that they have of their devotion to him. As it says here, when we begin devotional service, we enjoy the service itself. But as we develop in Krishna consciousness, we find pleasure in the love that comes from serving Krishna. The, the, the pleasure comes, goes from the service that we derive to the love that we experience in that service. So this is what is being talked here. These great souls, they have love for Krishna. And Prabhupada says, in a very, just as a boy and girl takes pleasure in, in association with each other, we know that goes on in the material world. When a boy and a girl come together, they enjoy each other's association in different ways. And they find complete happiness. And everything else stops for them. Same way for devotees. The devotees find complete pleasure in Krishna. In hearing about him, glorifying him. Everything becomes Krishna conscious because everything they need, all the happiness, all the satisfaction, all of the freedom from material suffering, all comes through Krishna. <laughs> and hearing and chanting is the way to, uh, to awaken that happiness about Krishna. Because if you, how can you really love someone or be attracted about someone if you don't know anything about them? Knowledge of Krishna awakens love for Krishna, and knowledge, a love for Krishna or, uh, awakens attraction for Krishna. Knowledge of Krishna awakens attraction for Krishna. Krishna is all attractive, that's what the word Krishna means. And that attraction leads to devotion and eventually to love, like that. So, Krishna, there's so much about Krishna, we can't possibly even explain what to speak of knowing within this one lifetime. Now Krishna becomes the focus of everything and the devotee just centers their whole life around Krishna. <laughs> Become Krishna addicted. <laughs> but you can't do that unless you hear. Prabhupada used to say, um, he would use a little parable. <laughs> he would say, one boy is saying to his friend, oh, you have a girlfriend, yes. Well, what's her name? I don't know. Where does she live? I don't know. What does she look like? I don't know. What does she do? I don't know. <laughs> so, where is that love? There's nothing there. It's just, I don't know. So if we don't know anything about Krishna, or we know so little about Krishna, how are we going to develop love for Krishna, attraction for Krishna? So it's based on hearing more and more, because it's natural. And Krishna comes in forms of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he comes in forms of Nishringadev, he comes in forms of Bhamanadev, he comes in forms of Balaram, he comes in so many different forms of himself, just for a varieties of, of types of attractions. He doesn't say, just get attracted to me as Krishna, the Supreme Lord, we can get attracted to any of the manifestations of Krishna. They're all Krishna in different manifestations of himself. And they all have all of these six qualities. Beauty, knowledge, strength, and fame, wealth, and renunciation. All of that is there. So this verse is really teaching us that everything you're looking for is in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. We have a tendency to do service and service is nice. But if we don't balance our service with hearing and chanting glories of the Lord sufficiently, our service will turn into work after a while, and then it will become more like a burden. We have to hear and chant the glories of the Lord regularly, 
And we see all that in our society, that many devotees, they serve, but they don't know anything about Krishna. When you ask them to give a class or speak about Krishna, they, don't, they, can't, they can't really do any, any of those things. Why? Because they don't read the books, they don't hear about Krishna, they don't spend time learning about Krishna. So, Krishna doesn't need our service, but what attracts us, Him, is our love. Of course, service is an expression of love, but unless we know about Krishna and His wonderful qualities, characteristics, pastimes, attributes, forms, that love won't really develop, won't really manifest. You can't love someone just because they're the big, the big, you know, just like somebody will say, well, you should love the president of the, you know, the country. Well, I don't know anything about him. Well, still, because he's the president, he's the most important person in the country, you still, you should honor him and love him. But that doesn't make any sense. Nobody will go along with that. <laughs> you have to know about him, maybe meet him, find out what he does. <laughs> How he, how he deals with other people, what are some of his policies. Then you start getting, well, I like him, I don't like you know. Then you start getting an opinion. But if you say, well, Krishna is God, and therefore you should love him, <laughs> doesn't make sense. Or you should even obey him. You have to know about him. <laughs> and that's where hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord becomes. And that's where Bhagavatam comes. Bhagavatam is just full of the glories of the Lord. And Prabhupada took so much time to write Srimad Bhagavatam in such a way that he, uh, you know, gave up his sleep in order for us to uh, have the Bhagavatam, the glories of the Lord. Prabhupada made a personal sacrifice. He was giving the Bhagavatam purports when everyone was sleeping, he would start writing at 12 o'clock midnight and go on two, three hours, sometimes more, in the morning, just to give us the Bhagavatam. That was one of his greatest sacrifices. He spent so much time giving up his personal needs just to give Bhagavatam. Because he knew when you have Bhagavatam, then you have everything you need to know about Krishna and devotional service. So you understood how important it is. But if we don't take advantage of it, if we don't read these books, if we don't discuss these books, if we don't even know anything about these books, or we know very little, then how, how, what are we doing in Krishna consciousness? It's about knowing and serving Krishna. So these books are so important. Here we're in, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna talks very philosophically. He talks a little about himself, but he mostly talks about himself in relationship to his devotees or in relationship to the material energy. But in Bhagavatam, you hear about the pastimes of the Lord in the spiritual realm or when he manifests his pastimes in this material world. And these are the things that are very attractive to the devotees because we get an we get a taste, not only do we get an insight about what Krishna is about, but we get a happiness that comes from hearing about Krishna. It's automatic. <laughs> and once you get a taste, then you, that taste leads you to more taste. Just like Srila Prabhupada would say, when someone asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, um, What do you get from chanting Hare Krishna? And Prabhupada said, we get chanting from chanting. We get chanting from chanting. So chanting leads to more chanting. <laughs> so the goal of chanting is chanting. <laughs> so we chant so we can chant more. <laughs> It's not like, well, I do chanting so I can, you know, get a job or I can find a nice wife or a husband. It's not like, it's not anything. It's about the essence and the practice itself is the end and the means. Chanting leads to chanting. There's chanting 
maybe with a little offense and then without offense, then there's chanting on pure. When pure chanting comes, then just like we see, Hari Haridas Thakur chanted 300,000 names of Krishna every day. So his chanting was spontaneous, and that's all he did was chant. And he was fully absorbed in happiness in chanting. He was so happy in chanting that when he was, they tried to torture him to stop him from chanting, before they even started to torture him, he said, you can cut my body into so many pieces, but each piece will be chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> And that's how much he was absorbed in chanting. And when they were beating him, he was simply chanting and not even feeling any of the difficulties that they were trying to create. So hearing about Krishna leads to more hearing about Krishna. Chanting about Krishna leads to more chanting about Krishna. Remembering Krishna means one wants to remember Krishna more. <laughs> it, becomes, it's, it becomes the end in itself. Where in material life, uh, you do something to get something else, generally. Very few people perform activities in itself for pleasure. Everybody spends most of their day working for someone. Why? So they want money. They don't go to work because it's pleasurable. Somebody, if the boss says, well, you know, just come to work and enjoy the work. I won't give you any money. Just enjoy the work. <laughs> Nobody will come. <laughs> People work to get something. But in devotional service, the activity is an end in itself. Chanting leads to chanting. Service leads to more service. Hearing leads to more hearing. Remembering leads to more remembering. <laughs> so this is bhakti. It is ever expanding like that. Okay, so these are some points. And we can find that satisfaction in Srimad Bhagavatam. Because Bhagavatam is Amalam Puranam, as it says here, Srimad Bhagavatam Puranam Alam Yad Vaishnavanam Priyam. It is very dear to the devotees. And the devotees find ha great satisfaction in Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, there are devotees who make vows every day to read Bhagavatam, so many pages. There are devotees who read every day so much, or even speak Bhagavatam. It wouldn't be good for her to stand on that, because that's where they put the flowers on, you know, because, <laughs> yeah. And they have to give the flowers to the deities, so it's not a good idea to walk on that. So, yeah, so um, we want to hear more and more about Krishna because then our life becomes happy. <laughs> Just like Maharaj Pariksit, what did he do? He simply uh, was uh, hearing from Sukadev Goswami for seven full days. When he was told that he had to die in seven days, what did he do? He didn't call, you know, a medical examiner, take a vaccination or anything. What did he do? He simply sat down and listened to Sukadev Goswami speak the glories of Bhagavatam for seven days. After seven days, he became completely full in knowledge of Krishna and completely fearless. He had no fear of death. So much so that he was ready for death. And he accepted death as just the next stage in life, that's all. And that was, that was what hearing about Bhagavatam was. And that's what Bhagavatam is about, bringing you to the stage of immortality, deathlessness, freedom from all what we say, any dangers of the material energy. So, yeah, so for seven days he just heard the glories of the Bhagavatam. And later on when his mother... Uttara, she, uh, she uh, uh, wanted to hear what her son, Maharaj Pariksit, had heard from Sri Sukadev Goswami. She asked him, can you tell me something? I'm your mother, you should give me something. 
Well, he said, well, that's very nice, Mother, but I don't really have time because my time of my death is coming very close. But he did give her something, so he spoke a, a synopsis or a summary of the Bhagavatam in the form of Brihad Bhagavatam Rita, which was later write, written down by Sanatan Goswami as a regular text. So he gave something in the form of a summary like that. But all, but he was fully satisfied. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is God himself, <laughs> one of his favorite activities was to hear the pastimes of Prahlad Maharaj, Dhruva Maharaj, from, yeah, Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit would read, and Lord Chaitanya would sit and listen to the Bhagavatam. He wouldn't even speak it, he would just listen. He's Bhagavatam himself. <laughs> he is he is the Bhagavatam. He is Bhagavatam personified. But he was listening to Bhagavatam <laughs> from Godadhar Pandit because he was relishing the glories of his pure devotees. He wanted to hear about his pure devotees and their pastimes. So Lord Chaitanya was showing not only by example. But he was, he, he was also deriving pleasure hearing the Bhagavatam. So if we don't really take Bhagavatam seriously or the pastimes of the Lord seriously, then we'll be missing out, as Srila Prabhupada writes in the Chaitanya, as Srila Prabhupada writes in the uh, Hare Krishna, Madhya Leela, he says, if we don't regularly hear and chant the glories of the Lord, he doesn't. He says, if we don't regularly read the books given to us about the pastimes of the Lord, then we'll simply return to eating and sleeping, and then the the happiness of transcendental life will be lost. Yeah. Will be lost. That's a verse. It's from Srimad Bhagavad no, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila. Chapter 25, verse number 278. In that verse, Prabhupada gets right to the point. If you don't read the books that I've given to you, you'll go back to material life, <laughs> basically. <laughs> or you really won't be able to taste hardly any of the happiness in devotional service, which is susukam kartam abhyayam. <laughs> like that. Okay. So thank you. We'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. There is a question on the internet. Um, Srinath Bhagavatam says, My devotees desire only the taste of my beauty. How is this, how this is service, one who wants to enjoy him? Well, that's one of the ways that it's called, it's, it's called, this is Prabhupada's really referring to neutral devotional service. There you have Shantaras, Dasyaras, uh, Sakyaras, Vatsalyaras, and Madhuryaras. So in Shantaras, it's, what is it called? Vadikshasya, I think that's the term where Sitting and fronting the Lord in his transcendental form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or any of his forms and admiring the beauty of Sri Krishna and becoming enchanted and by that. That's, that's bhakti also. But it's bhakti without the service attitude. Mm -hmm. Higher than that is to do the service attitude. So it's one form, Prabhupada is just mentioning one form of how one can appreciate Krishna. We come and we see the Lord is there in his deity form. So we actually take darshan and we appreciate how nicely the Lord looks, how he's dressed, how merciful he is, how available he is. That's bhakti. That's a form of bhakti. It's not selfish. 
But then again, Dasya Rath means to serve the Lord. And that's the platform we have to come to. Prabhupada just mentioning one, one aspect of, our, of how bhakti works, that's all. Okay. There is one more. Mm. On being a particle at the lotus feet of the Lord, what service the particle can do there? What he can contribute? <laughs> because we are part and parcel of Krishna, we are, you know, we have some of the qualities of Krishna in smaller quantity. So we can use those qualities to serve the Lord. We can use our intelligence to serve the Lord. We can use our resources to serve the Lord. We can use our um, and, uh, our words to serve the Lord. And we can serve. We can surrender everything. We can serve us. If we're situated at the lotus feet of the Lord, that means devotional service. So that is our success to be situated at the lotus feet of the Lord and to serve the Lord. That's our success. What other success is there? But because Krishna is so merciful, he accepts us who are so insignificant, he accepts our service. And when it's done with love, it is, then it's per perfect. Krishna doesn't say, well, what does Krishna say? Patram pushram palam tvayam yome bhakti panasya titaraham bhakti uparitam asnami paryatat manaha. He said, just offer me a leaf, a flower, fruit and water with bhakti and I will accept. Mm -hmm. Mm. With bhakti. I, I, uh, you, before you put that plastic away, that little child was walking all over it. So it's not, I would say you would have to wash it first before you use it again. Yeah, yeah. it can't be used for, the, for any devotional activities until it's washed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so yeah. We are insignificant, but Krishna accepts our service when it's done with the desire to please him. That's all. That's his magnanimity, that's his mercy, that's his kindness. Okay? <laughs> that's the last question? Looks like, yes. Mm -hmm. So you're speaking about listening um, about Krishna, reading about him so we can get to know him, but we have so much taste for listening about worldly affairs and prajapa and all of this nonsense. So how can we lessen this and try well, to get more taste for Krishna? Yeah, we, well, how much satisfaction do we get out of material topics? It might give you some information, might inspire the mind for a few moments, but it goes away quickly. And it doesn't leave you feeling transcendental <laughs> or happy. But mm, the answer to your question is just replace it with transcendental hearing, that's all. And as that continues and increases, then we get a taste from that, and then we lose our attraction for these other things. We, we, because of our conditioning, we still have attraction for things in the material world. That's, due, that's just our conditioned nature. But we replace that with our spiritual nature, hearing about Krishna, devotional service. And it's interesting, even if you like politics, even if you like economics, even if you like medicine, Prabhupada spoke on, on all those things. 
He spoke on war, he spoke on Ayurveda, he spoke on astrology, he spoke on history, <laughs> he spoke on so many things. So both in Prabhupada's books and in his lectures especially, especially his morning walks, talks about a variety, talks about money, talks about economics, talks about governments, <laughs> A lot about politics. He's, he's giving a lot of talk about politics, <laughs> about the four varnas and their position in society and how society is, uh, you know, organized today. So even if you you don't have to necessarily give it up. We call it uh, Krishnaizing it. <laughs> Krishnaize that those political those material topics. That's all. Is that all right? Make sense? I don't know if you, nobody tells me whether they agree or disagree when I answer their questions, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, so anything else? Did you take notes on the class? Good, thank you. All right, we'll stop here. We can end a little early tonight because everybody's engaged in other things. So thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Mm -hmm.